Hi everybody, this is Alchemist 2 and I'm back again with another series review. I just recently watched Genius Chapter 3 and this one was extremely emotional. We get to see <clears throat> the result of Maneva and Albert's um, hmm, canoodling. <laughs> well, it was pretty obvious what was going to happen in that situation. If you've read the book, then it follows. <clears throat> but... He also is supposed to be courting Marie <laughs> and seeing Maneva is against his mother's wishes. His father actually gives him his blessing and tells him while he's on his deathbed, go to her, marry her. And that scene, <clears throat> dealing with a recent death of my father... That was really hard for me to watch, even though I wasn't present when my dad died. <clears throat> I was there after the fact and got to say my goodbyes, but still, just losing both of my parents, it, just <laughs> it hit a chord, and it was really raw, and um, then Maneva gave birth to Liesl, <clears throat> and Liesl developed some sort of respiratory issue. I'm not sure if she had um, tuberculosis. I guess it was still the time when tuberculosis could be a problem. <clears throat> but Liesl died. And Maneva actually, at first she was inconsolable, but when Albert came to her, they were able to come to consensus. And... <clears throat> It was really quite remarkable how they bounced back from that, how resilient they both were, especially in Maneva. And, um, <clears throat> of course, his mother still does not approve of her due to the fact that she comes from a Catholic background. And, of course, being a Jew, she wants him to marry a good Jewish girl. And... <clears throat> Only the best for her little boy. Hmm. But it's really a, a good series, and I really enjoyed this episode, especially with the formation of the Olympia Academy. And I didn't know about the Olympia Academy. This was a detail that I'm sure I traipsed across in the book, but I had forgotten. I thought, oh, right. He, he did have sort of a... A gentleman's club of his own and they would speak of art and philosophy and physics and science and <clears throat> just areas of study that had not been breached yet and it was a very revolutionary time very exciting and he was still very much a figure of controversy <laughs> Albert the rebel I, I just I love it <laughs> It's no wonder I can relate to this man so much. But he still faces the scrutiny of his mother. Of course, his sister Maya, he and his sister were like two peas in a pod. And that's been discussed in any documentary that I've seen about Albert Einstein. That <clears throat> That's true. And actually, coming from that kind of background, I can vouch for that. We're very family-oriented people. Uh, I'm not sure what else to say about the episode other than it had the advent of X-ray technology, which I thought was really neat. And then, of course, the, um, the man who kind of steals credit. Well, he, he did. He, I, I forget his name, though, so pardon me for that. He took the credit, and of course the original <clears throat> founder or discoverer of um, electricity. What am I talking about? X-rays. He, <laughs> it was a little bit miffed. And yeah, like any, any person who lays claim, well, except for Nikola Tesla, he was a rare example. Poor guy. I just, I love Nikola Tesla. I, I just, I feel for him. But anyway, I'm getting off track. Uh, <laughs> this man <clears throat> had laid claim to x-rays and somebody else was saying, 
that they had found a more revolution, a better, a more efficient way. And <laughs> I thought, oh, go to the patent office and get that thing legalized. And let me tell you something about patents. Coming from experience, patents are expensive. And <laughs> when I dealt with the patent office, they weren't very kind to me. <laughs> they actually treated me like I was the scum of the earth. And I forget what invention I was trying to pitch. I just had blueprints. I had drawings of what I wanted to make a reality. <clears throat> and I was looking through my old drawings and I realized one of the drawings I have has become a thing. And I thought, <laughs> okay. But I'm not going to be angry. Just let it go. I'm, I'm too humble for that. I just, I don't like confrontations. So even though the, I, that, the idea that I came up with, it was basically this uh, kind of bib that keeps food uh, from getting all over yourself. It had a kind of a fold. And I've seen it on television. I thought that was mine. That was my idea. <laughs> I'm not a mother, but... I just thought, you know what, it would be nice if people had actual bib bibs. I know they it would look kind of dumb, but it would save face and it would be so much easier to have a good meal. Granted, some of it probably will spill on you no matter what you do. Gravity, win gravity wins. But <clears throat> I saw that and I thought, <sighs> I mean, I was a little bit agitated by it, but I thought, yeah, well, pfft. I don't care. <laughs> Life's too short. And <laughs> speaking of which, I will be going to court on uh, July the 10th. I won't give details about that. If you're interested, just ask me because I can't talk about it too much in the realm of the internet. It's uh, July the 10th and that's after I actually go to PopCon. I'm not flaking out like I did for Comic-Con. I felt so... I was just depressed. I was missing... My dad, I it was I was missing both my mom and my dad on Easter. It was my first Easter without them, so yeah, it was really challenging. And people, there was one person that said, "You should be happy." And I've already discussed this, so I'm sounding like a broken record. And forgive me, but anyways, to go back to the episode itself, I get off track sometimes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to. Uh, it was a very well played out episode. It was sensational. It had um, just all the intrigue that you would expect. And I love, <laughs> I'm going to say this out, out loud and be very direct. Uh, the, the actor who plays Albert, oh my gosh, he is so beautiful. I'm thinking, Oh, if you were close, uh, I don't know if I could hold myself back. <laughs> I'm going to try to be as refined as I possibly can. To take one step closer to me and you will be glomped within an inch of your life. And worse. <laughs> but, oh, good Lord Almighty. Oh, that actor is just, ooh. Mmm super yummy. Anyway, it's because I like men with dark hair and dark eyes. <laughs> I have not gotten over that and I never will, but let's see. Uh, I really don't have that much else to say about the particular episode, although it was sensationally done and I'd like to see the, um, the formation of the Olympia Academy and when they were talking about how light itself is a wave, just like a note played on the piano. I loved, I absolutely adored that. I thought it's so true. And Nikola Tesla, I love going back to my hero again. Bear with me. Nikola Tesla actually spoke of something very similar. And that's why I love Einstein and Tesla and Feynman and all these other um, brilliant minds that just could see and perceive so many elements that we just do not comprehend. Just like they said, the ether, they were speaking of it. They, and one of them says, well, how do you know it? It's just like faith. How do you know it exists? 
Well, we don't. <laughs> How would you, and another colleague says, well, Herr Einstein, how do you prove it? And he gives him a very straightforward answer. He says, I don't know. <laughs> I thought, thank you. We're still trying to figure out the ether now. And they're bringing it up. And I thought, we're going back to that era. And I thought, it's just, for me, as somebody who loves physics and everything it entails, it's, ah, I'm, I'm sorry, I geek out over it. I can't help it. But it's it's the love of my life ever since I was 10. I didn't get involved in it due to my ineptability in mathematics. But still, I love it. And I will never stop loving it for so long as I live. <laughs> it's just so fascinating to me. I, ca I can't help it. it. It just gives me... And it also, it's very, very sensual to me. <laughs> and... and I find it very sexy. So anybody out there who wants to talk about theoretical physics with me, oh, please, God, do. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just, oh, talk nerdy to me. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> it, it was a great episode. And I'm looking forward to further episodes down the line. And then there's another series called Your Million, which I will be reviewing, by the way due to my futuristic um, tendencies, and I'm actually right in the middle. I'm a humanist and I'm a futurist. I'm a rare combination of the two. I see pros and cons uh, with both, and I think you have to be a happy medium. You can't be one extreme or the other, or you tend to be a bit, hmm, how do I say this, blinded. You have to have balance. Like with everything, you need balance. <laughs> Homeostasis. I had to say it, sorry. <laughs> that's my one science joke for the day. Um, that's about all I have to say about that particular episode. And I will review uh, <clears throat> your million as soon as the episodes are um, <laughs> aired. Until next time. Live long and prosper. Ciao, Tootsie.